Okay, there is a folder on your desktop contains two folders. The first one is the assignment, that's the problem statements. The second one is the uh, Scilab codes. So I'll go to the Scilab codes first. Uh, lab one is the today's uh, lab session. Within lab one, you have uh, two Sci Scilab files. The first one is the explicit FTCS solver. And the second one is the implicit solver. So just click on the first file. Okay, so this uh, similar restore last session windows pop up, ad, uh, pop up again and again whenever you open Scilab. So you may just cancel it. So the source code opens up. Uh, here you can see like the first problem has been hard coded. The solu the uh, values of all the properties have been hard coded here. And uh, simply press this icon here. That's the execute icon. And once you press that at the bottom you'll find the console window so just go to the console window so here you'll find that uh, the properties that had been hard coded show up on the screen and uh, then as the problem statement uh, states that we need to run the problem at three different pressure gradients so i've uh, made a uh, selection menu that says for the first when you enter one year it will select db by dx equal to zero uh, when you press enter 2 over here, it will select dp by dx equal to 20,000. And when you enter 3 over here, it will select uh, db by dx equal to minus 30,000. So say I go with the first option and I enter 1 here. So in this case, it will take a pressure gradient of 0 and uh, generate the output. So the, the output window pops up. So it's dynamically plotting like you, see, you can see on the console it has been shown that output is plotted at uh, different time steps uh, the same correspond to the legend over here uh, so the marks correspond to the analytical solution the marked uh, uh, graph whereas the continuous lines are the numerical solution let me just w say one one thing here okay so uh, when you saw that the the program was actually plotting the output if you if you look at it carefully it first plotted six continuous lines uh, six yeah and then it plotted on top of those six lines six set of symbols so the, the continuous lines are actually the numerical output uh, at the various times as have been mentioned in the legend and the marks correspond to actually that series solution for the same time levels which are now superimposed so the point here is that you can see that the the analytical solution and the numerical solution for a simple problem such as this really really match each other quite quite well uh, just keep that in mind that the marks correspond to the analytical solution the series solution and the continuous lines which come first before the the marks show up they are the numerical solution so as you can see here very quickly uh, before he shows how to take this output and put it in that word file you can see that at the last time level which is uh, t of 1.08 you see that the velocity profile has become more or less straight as what we would expect when the time goes to a very large value because this is a uh, dpdx equal to 0 situation so there is no imposed pressure gradient the way it started was uh, initially the the velocity here is uh, is 40 okay at the top plate the velocity at the bottom plate is uh, is zero and then as time progresses it simply the, the the velocity profile simply develops into more and more of a linear profile eventually it will become linear if you let the code run for more time than say 1.08 as has been the last uh, time step if you let it run for say 20 or whatever then you will see that it has become a straight line so the idea now is that for all these uh, uh, lab sessions such outputs will be generated by placing those uh, uh, or choosing those options so for example here what you chose was the option was uh, dpdx equal to 0 corresponded to that prompt of 1 similarly you can do for prompt of 2 and 3 and so on and every time such an output will be generated the idea is that you can take this output 
and uh, copy it from here and paste uh, put it or, or uh, paste it in that word uh, document where a place has been provided. So, that you have some sort of a homework file for yourself which you can utilize for later purpose. I think is that uh, the idea. So, now he will uh, demonstrate how you can take this output from the scilab window and uh, paste it in that word. To save it as a image file simply go to file export to and then uh, from the bottom you can drop down menu you can select uh, bitmap file right at the top here and uh, just rename it and so it will by default get uh, stored in lab 1 the folder lab 1 lab 1 yeah fine all right why don't we just look at that uh, some other value of dpdx just for completeness So, to rerun the code uh, again go to the source code and we will again press this execute icon here and if you go back to the console window uh, the code has started again say this time I select the option 3 that is dpdx of minus 30,000. Bitmap option is not available. The option is Windows there at the, the very first one I think. First one. Windows BNP, BMP as it says. Ok now you see in this case this was a dpdx of minus 30,000 which means that it is an assisting pressure gradient. Uh, so, what it turns out is as uh, as we had uh, sketched earlier when we were talking the analytical solutions, the final time profile as you can see it is a fuller time profile for the purple line and that is precisely how we had sketched also the solution for an assisting pressure gradient and that is precisely how it is coming. Again here the continuous lines are the code output that is the numerical solution and the marks are the analytical solution. Let us run one, one more of that uh, adverse pressure gradient. So, you go back to the source code, press execute, go to the scilab console. So, in this case you can see that uh, there is actually some sort of a reverse flow type situation on the bottom side because there is a adverse pressure gradient and then it reaches the boundary condition of u equal to 40 at the top as is expected. So, this was all done using the FTCS uh, which is the explicit method <coughs> exact same thing you can do with the, the implicit solver. Mm -hmm.